always trip out when uh, I get the opportunity to have a chat with you because I've known you for such a long time, having been in this role, doing the commentary for, for a number of years and, and working with your dad, even Dino and Dino initially, and he would always drag you to the different venues uh, like J Bay and, and Tahiti. Is it a trip for you to be on tour now and, and revisiting all those locations? I think I first met you was maybe at J Bay when I was like 11 years old, just trying to fly down the line and hang with all my heroes. and. Yeah, even just being on tour, this is my sixth year, finishing my sixth year on tour, and I'm only 23. It feels like I'm a seasoned vet, even though I'm, you know, still a grom. <laughs> it seems like you've really stepped into this mentor role in your local area, St. Clemente, <laughs> and you're, you're taking grom surfing, and now you're starting to see, I think, the fruits of your efforts there kind of pay off with the likes of Griffin qualifying. Yeah, well, I just, you know, I. Just, thought like I was in a position I wanted to motivate and, and um, lead by example to kids coming up after me so I just figured why not and I, I just started hanging out with the kids because my friends around my age just kind of stopped surfing a little bit but once I started hanging out with the kids I started like, finding that I was motivating them <laughs> to surf and stuff but which is fine but um, yeah just trying to find people to surf with really. I guess that's something that all through different generations all the kids in, in that zone have had people to look up to. Who, who are the guys that you were able to look up to when you were growing up at San Clemente? You have like guys like Ligodowskis and Wardo and things like that, but I guess without even knowing it, I kind of looked up to my dad a lot, just how psyched he was to surf and what kind of lifestyle he lived. So yeah, I guess my dad's been my biggest influence for sure. Your dad is still one of the most psyched fans of surfing I've ever met in my life. <laughs> and uh, also with equipment. I mean, he works pretty closely with Matt Biolis in, in helping construct your quivers. Uh -huh. uh, are you getting For involved sure. in those conversations too or are they just taking control of it? Uh, actually recently just this like last trip to Hawaii I've kind of like almost taken a little stress out of his hands and just really been like okay this is how I want my boards. Instead of him kind of like being 90 to 100 percent with Matt it's, you know it's kind of 50 50 or my dad's almost telling me what he thinks I need to improve my surfing and I'm going yeah I like that or I do and then telling Matt so yeah, it's just trying to mature all the way around and, um, you know, be honest with Matt is, is hard because he's kind of a staunch big guy that can be a little <laughs> intimidating. He's a gruff human <laughs> being for sure. When I was a kid and probably your first couple of boards, it was glass in fins and, and that relationship for the, the shaper, you know, it, it kind of took that whole fin conversation out of the mix. Yeah, and, for and sure. And now, now a board can completely change just by, you know, what setup you choose to put in your boards. Now I'm on the FCSs for sure. I used to be like, you know, glass on for life or whatever. And then I, when I switched over, I was like, these things are better, they're faster, and you can fit 100 boards in your board bag, so why not do that? When I first started doing the tour, I was, if a board was like five and a half pounds, I'd like give it back because it was too heavy, and now I won't even use them if they're that light. <laughs> so uh, yeah, just things change and evolve, and um, yeah, it's fun. What else do you set yourself competitively? I've always wanted to win a Triple Crown. Um, the last three years, I was wanted to win a world title, especially once Gabriel and John started winning. You know, it's just the small goals, you know, mainly just having fun, trying to improve. I don't want to sell myself short once I'm on my rocking chair on my porch when I'm 50 years old, I want to say, you know, I tried my hardest and uh, I maximized my talent. I just feel, for me personally, that there's just a few guys who have learned to compete full throttle uh -huh. and it's kind of that's the reason why the sport's progressing so quickly because everyone's learning how to get to that same spot where they're able to do their very best surfing, executing at their full potential. Yeah, totally. I think, um, you know, like John's learned to compete like insanely good. And I think uh, for me, the, a little bit hard because I feel like uh, it's hard to do your, your very best surfing. And then once you can, can hit that stride, it's an awesome feeling. But guys like John and Philippe and Gabriel are doing that consistently so I feel like I was kind of like on the back burner because I wasn't doing that but uh, yeah you know I feel like some of the surfing I did in, in Europe was was kind of my best surfing and I felt like that kind of put me in that conversation a little bit so that was a rad feeling for me.